Alright guys, so jumping right into this video, you see me building some icebergs in the background whilst I try to explain what's going on. Uh, so this series uh, is all about uh, schematics and how to use them in World Painter and what more you can do with them than the ordinary tree or rock that most people do. Uh, so at first I tried to make some icebergs, not everything in this video went according to plan, uh, you will figure that out later on in the video, but I think the general idea uh, works out quite well, the concept is okay, uh, and I believe you can do a lot with schematics in World Painter, and I feel like they're underused, mainly for certain things like this. Uh, so that's why I tried to create a series to, to add some uh, extra detail to your world painter maps and to add some creativity to all of it um, so yeah you see me finishing these up soon uh, and then i'll be going into game and explain a little bit more about what's going on all right i'm here in the world where i made the glaciers uh, for some reason something went wrong well i was recording with the uh, camera studio mod uh, it kind of glitched out and it only showed a few chunks it just didn't work uh, so I left in the first time left I made, I ended up uh, testing those out and I just didn't get the results I wanted. So I tried something else. Uh, I tested these out as well by now and also these didn't get the results I really wanted. Uh, later in the video I'll explain what I would recommend for you to try and do, but for now I'll continue using these. Uh, so as you see I used packed ice and blue ice on the bottom to uh, kind of make the darker look. And then I made a ring for the normal ice, so you get that sort of layer above the water if you want it. And then I used packed ice, uh, normal ice and snow, of course it starts raining. Uh, yeah, so I used snow and ice to the, for the top layer, just spread them around a bit. Uh, I tried to use the snow blocks to get a smoother nail, or the snow slab things I guess, just snow it's called. Uh, but they just didn't get, uh, or World Painter just didn't really like it. Uh, you might be able to use a snow biome internal smooth snow layer, but I don't think that's going to work. So for now, this is what I'm going to work with, so I'll meet you guys uh, in World Painter. Alright, so I'm currently in World Painter, and let's get ourselves a little new map. Uh, so not everything in this tutorial went according to plan uh, and I simply don't have the time to fix everything. I want to get this video out there, uh, seeing as this, this is just a general concept for how to uh, more creatively use uh, schematics. So I'm going to make more videos of like this one. I'm thinking about doing one, f uh, wait, one second because I can't speak and do this at the same time. Uh, New world there. Uh, yeah, I, I want to do more of this type of videos. I think about doing one that's based around uh, caves, and I want to do one that's uh, uh, that I already have thought about. That's about cliffs, making cliffs using schematics, uh, because I think you can do a lot more with schematics than people tend to do. Uh, currently, it's mostly just rocks and trees, and I want to show that you can do a lot more if you properly use them. So let's use the newest version, make flat terrain. Uh, you could do hilly. Maybe let, let's do hilly. Uh, move it down a bit so you have just water. Uh, make it ocean. Just do sand, I guess, uh, and that should be it. Beach is off. Yeah, that should be about it. And then just click create. And now we're going to load in the schematics. If you don't know how to create your own schematics, please look that up in another video. Uh, I don't have one about it on my own channel, but there's more than enough. So I already got the folder selected where they're in. So I'm going to open them. And this is where the most important parts come in. Uh, you need to center them. So it's kind of important to do that. Now I realize these aren't the same schematics as you see in the video because stuff went wrong recording. Uh, my apologies, uh, apologies for that. But yeah, uh, so try to get them somewhat centered. If you look at this, uh, it says 13, 14, so that's basically the edge. So I want to move this to around 7, minus 7 that is, and this to about minus 6 then, or and I know this layer is supposed to touch the water, so I want that under the actual line. Uh, then the next thing you want to do is have this on, always render rotation mirroring. Uh, you don't need to spawn it on solid land, so you want it on water. Uh, it needs to collide with nothing, be sure to turn that on. 
uh, this doesn't matter, this doesn't matter. And also, if you leave the redstone blocks in whilst copying the schematics, I use redstone blocks for my corners, uh, be sure to replace with our redstone block. And that should be it. And then you just do that for all of them. So I'm gonna go through one more with you guys, and then I'm just gonna skip through the others. So again, this is minus 17, so you're gonna try and get around half, so that's about 8. Uh, minus 16 the same, it's about minus 8. And then move it down to just below this layer. Uh, collide on water, random rotation is on, and that's nothing. And red stone block. And that should be it. Uh, so I'll go through the others and then I'll get back to you. Alright, so once you've done that, you will see this doesn't work anymore because it only spawns on water and for some reason it just doesn't tend to fit. Uh, now you have this slider over here, alright? Uh, this is the intensity. So what I could do is I could put in 500 and as you see here, this changes. Um, there's gonna be a lot, lot less icebergs. We want this number rather low, so I think 20 should be good. Uh, and just play around with that number if you don't get the results you want. And as well, you can play around with this number, relative frequency. So the ones we want to spawn a little bit less uh, is this big one. So I want this to be at like 20%. Um, this big one I also want to spawn a little bit less, so I think that should be 30. Uh, then we have the other big one, this should be around 40 I'd say. This one should be around 75. And these can be at 100 and this one I actually want to put at 120 I think. Uh, you can go over a certain percentage if that's easier so 120 should work as well. Uh, and then yeah put this at eh, maybe not 15 maybe 25. Let's try that. Uh, you can name this to iceberg if you want to then turn it to a nice blue color. I think that would work the best. There we go. And that should be done uh, in this menu. So you now get this iceberg. So what you now would like to do is get, uh, like I have a few custom brushes of my own. I have Terracraft brushes. And then you have the normal brushes. So I'll be trying to just use the normal brushes. Move up the intensity. Always keep it at 100. Uh, instead of m messing around with this, you should mess around with this intensity, basically. Uh, it's easier that way. And then don't go too big. Um, depending on, um, you could go bigger depending on the icebergs you made and then put in a few just like so and then I think I want to add some cracks in there I'm not sure if this is this doesn't work too well um, let's go with one of these this also doesn't perfectly do what I want so I might get one of my own there you go uh, I hope that kind of creates a little bit more variety in the center. And I want a little bit more here. Uh, I do kind of try not to use my own brushes in these tutorials, but if I have to, I have to. Uh, so once you've done that, a little touch you can add is to use the frost layer. And yeah, once again, uh, just use any old brush. This should, yeah, this kind of sucks because it only takes the darkest of darkest spots. And this one doesn't have that many. So if you have other brush sets, uh, try and use those. Uh, for instance, I have these, so I'll be doing that. Uh, and I'll actually go for one of my own, because this one has a little bit more uh, islands, basically. So that creates some islands. Mm, that one isn't too great for this job. Yeah, and also minus them so if you press alt on your keyboard you can subtract in world painter uh, so if you want to kind of get them more sporadically around the place just also every so often press alt uh, and also if you alt scroll you can rotate your brush so if you want this or this or whatever like if you like this more or this more or you can just rotate your brush with all it's very useful when you use custom brushes it's not very useful for round brushes because it doesn't really do anything so now you have this and I already noticed this one doesn't have enough ice there because it's really sticking out. So I wanted more there. Uh, and then you should try and get some more small little things out there just to really speak to this atmosphere you're trying to create with these outbursts. Now, I'm not 
too happy with how my icebergs turned out. I, I would have liked them a little bit different. Uh, I think you should have a combination between pretty big ones and some relatively small ones. I think uh, mine are just generally too small. Uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, I think it works. So you now export the map. Now you might think, why would I do this? Why would I not just use uh, world edit to create some icebergs? You could definitely do that and you would definitely get uh, more unique icebergs. But I also think it's a lot easier to either start with this. So you have a general shape or to, which you can then add on into game. But uh, if you want to do massive areas like huge pieces of land or areas where you just sporadically want icebergs some there, some there in the ocean. This is just going to be a lot easier than doing it with World Edit every single time. It takes a bit more time in the beginning, but if you make more World Paint projects and do a lot more things, it's going to be useful to have a lot of schematics for certain things like this. Um, so let's get the export settings right. This all doesn't really matter. Uh, we don't really ma care about the border or anything else like that for now. Uh, we definitely want creative, allow cheats, large poems is fine, doesn't really matter. Export everything, we want to use the beta version, 1.14.4, and then export. Right, so when you try to open the world, it's going to say this because it's uh, 1.14.4 version. Just skip it, I know what I'm doing. So it's now going to load the world and we'll see what we get. Most often when you world paint, you're not going to get the exact results you want. And definitely not on the first try. So I'm just going to stick with this one for now because I spent way too much time trying to figure this out uh, outside of the tutorial. A little bit of lag was rendering in. And this is what you get. So you get the chunks of ice all around. I might have gone a little bit overboard on that. And then you get these few little islands pieces sticking around here. Now you can see it's a bit random. There's also bits of layers of snow. On top of the snow that's because of the frost layer. So there wasn't any frost layer here in World uh, Painter. So it didn't add it there. I'm not sure if you can actually see that in the F3 menu. Yeah, frozen ocean. And this is general ocean. Uh, so it helps to do that because that it also gets a little bit more layers. Um, so walking around here, this is pretty cool. Uh, like I said, I would like to have some more height differences and stuff like that. Uh, but it does blend very well. And now for the most important part, the thing about uh, icebergs is the bottom is bigger. Now you do get these occasional glitches where water is missing. And you also get some areas where the ice sort of drips down into the water I, I, I don't know I think it just freezes the water below it uh, which is quite interesting I don't know how it works I think it has to do with the blue ice all right a quick google search later I can't really find out why it happens honestly I don't know I don't know if it's a minecraft functionality or, or a world painter bug um, anyhow I think you could kind of ignore it it sort of has a cool effect as it creates more icebergs than you already have uh, but yeah, I do feel like this is very cool underwater and it's something you can't really achieve by using World Painter normally. Getting layers like this, getting spikes like that and then having a normal floor layer. Um, so this is my introductory to uh, another function of schematics and I would like to make more of these. If you enjoy or if you have any suggestions for what I could do more with this series, please let me know. And I hope to see you all next time or in another video. Have a nice day. Bye.